So you probably have heard about Life of Fred and you're wondering what it's all about. How is it that a math curriculum can be in a story format and about this little character called Fred who is five years old and he is a lecturer at a university? Well, today's video I'm going to be talking about Life of Fred, the unconventional math curriculum and what you need to know before you start. So Life of Fred is a math curriculum that takes you everything from say grade one all the way to high school maths and beyond. It is a complete uh, curriculum that covers everything that a child should know. The difference is, is that it's in a story format and it is not what, as the author says, it's not in the, the drill and kill where it's just lists and lists and lists of math problems. It's also not in this fluffy, like really colorful kind of match and draw lines and stick there. And, you know, everything is so bright and, and stimulating, but thinking hasn't really happened. So it's not that either. It is in black and white. There's no color, but it certainly isn't a reflection on the curriculum itself. It is really a journey that that you get to know who Fred is and uh, all his adventures and just as math really is it's not something that is that is like a separate subject in life really you know um, uh, it is not really even a subject it is just life you're going to need to know uh, how to calculate things in life and this curriculum is all about applied math so the situations, uh, he's always got a story and then he needs to work out something. And as you go up uh, the, the levels of math, it becomes more, um, you, the child learns about more skills and it becomes more abstract. So what is my uh, big takeaway with this curriculum? I would say it is delightful, it is entertaining, it is light. Uh, each book consists of about 19 chapters uh, and there's about three three or four pages in each chapter and maybe two to three, sometimes four math problems that a child needs to do. And a child, if they are reading, they could do this on their own, but I really have found great benefit in uh, reading, reading the chapters to my child. And as you are reading, you know, because the stories are so, um, they say, it catches you off guard. They are, they, they're so out there <laughs> that um, it's wonderful just to use it as, as a conversation piece. And when, it, when a child's reading this and we, you can talk about the situations and the reactions and there's good guys and there's bad guys and there's students and there's, um, you know, Fred is being five-year-olds, he's naive. He doesn't really know about uh, the real world. So there's lots of those situations and um, that are mostly funny, you know, um, because your child will probably know, oh, no, Fred, don't you know this? So the storyline is great. And from a mathematical perspective, I absolutely love the author's approach to learning, not just maths. Uh, you know, it's not it's not about just practicing for the sake of practicing or, uh, you know, getting everything right for the sake of getting everything right. It's really about expanding your your thinking, your thought processes and um, and applying what you know. So, you know, uh, schooling in today has become very uh, assessment based that results reflect progress and it doesn't really uh, gauge how, how a child is uh, thinking has developed or their, uh, let's put it, their abstract thinking, you know, thinking beyond what's just given to them. So nothing is spoon fed. And if you are coming from a curriculum that has this uh, we give you this and we want you to give us that. It might be a little bit of a, of a, of a switch in thinking wise because uh, you really have to listen carefully to the story. And then he 
he subtly gives you the skills and gives you tips on how to then later in solve the problems. And there are practice rounds, practice opportunities. It's not a lot. And I would say as, as you're, uh, you progress through the books, the level of abstract thinking definitely changes. And if you find that in the beginning stages, you've just gone quick, quick, quick through the books and then number, I think around Edgewood or farming. So the books are named alphabetically. It starts with apples and then you get uh, butterflies and then cats and then dogs and it goes up. But it also goes up uh, in a abstract way, you know, thinking wise. So what you might find is that suddenly it feels like there's a big jump. And then I would just say, just put it on hold. Then just do some, some kind of practice round until your child is developmentally there again to carry on. And that's, that's certainly my experience. We were fine. And then there was a bit of a, a change. And instead of like bulldozing on and like, come on, you, you know, you, you, don't you understand that that things go in layers and if your child isn't quite there yet it it's really no use pushing it then just do something else or find you know what I think what we did we 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 um did a bit of interesting uh, math on some apps or we did some I call it flunk dunk in South Africa you might still remember the quiz show um, but it's really be able to do mental maths you know quickly and we just did a little bit of that just to practice some mental maths then after maybe a month or two or a bit longer even a term uh, we were ready for Fred again and then you know slipstream through through the next bit of books but sometimes you just need to gauge there needs to be if you need to wait then just wait it's really um, it's something natural, right? Development. A child develops. They, they're not, their body changes. And so their mind will also change and, and develop. So it's, it, we can just wait for that. So if you are considering, you want to know what, what is it that I need to know beforehand, uh, to start with Apples, which is the very first book. So if they can just sit and listen to a story, just if you read like a library book or any kind of story and they are quite happy to just sit and listen, then then that's a that's a good start. You'll need that because they'll have to sit and listen for at least three pages, four pages. And uh, definitely in the beginning stages, you will need to read to them because they won't be able to to read the text yet. Then the next thing is that they need to be able to count from one to ten and just do basic addition and subtraction of zero to ten. It's no use pushing something when the child is not ready. But when they're ready, it is it is like um, you slipstream. You really slipstream the development. And uh, that's what it's about. It's not about them not being challenged or not thinking. But there's this readiness. And you need to look for that. So would I recommend Life of Fred? Yes, absolutely. I think I'm really biased because I've been using it from the from the get go. And I have two completely different children. They think differently. They learn differently. And um, it's definitely something that you can customize to each child. Is it for everyone? Perhaps not. You know, this is something that you you you'll gauge. You know, that's why we have different curriculums. That's why we have different approaches. And it is good to not try and force something just because something works for one person, it might not work for another. But I absolutely love it. I, I think beyond the math side of this curriculum, I really love the approach the author takes to learning because I'm 100% um, behind that in that um, it shouldn't be a, a drill and kill you know, where it's just practice, 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 but it has no meaning, there's no application, there's actually no thinking involved, there's just memorizing of facts, uh, but that's not really developing your thinking or even your, your enjoyment of a subject. Um, and it's also not just a whole lot of fluff that's made so pretty and so appealing, but really nothing much is going on.